other thing that we as economists know, and many, economists, many things that we do not know about fiscal policy, in fact, we stress a lot of things that we do not know about fiscal policy, and there are a lot of things that we agree upon, but probably even more things that we don't agree upon. Let me begin with a few things that which we do agree upon fiscal policy, namely, one is the tax smoothing principle, the idea that it is not, uh, it, the idea that it's good to allow deficit to go up during recessions as long as they are compensated by surplus during booms, the idea that you, don't want, you want to keep tax rate stable, so allowing this, this, the deficit to smooth over the cycle, it would be a bad idea to raise taxes during a recession and to cut taxes during a boom. Another way of putting it on the spending side is that automatic stabilizers have to do their work, so it's perfectly fine to allow, for example, unemployment compensation to go up during a recession, and, and, uh, if, and if this spending causes deficit, so be it. That's fine, as long as they are compensated by surpluses. Incidentally, that has the implication that balanced budget rules, uh, namely rules that impose that the budget should be balanced every period uh, are a bad idea because they go against this basic economic principle of tax smoothing. Uh, however, uh, unfortunately, this basic principle of tax smoothing are also not followed by policymakers, namely uh, policymakers are very happy to let deficit grow during recession, but they're less comfortable reducing them during surpluses. So a balanced budget rule may be a second best uh, against political distortion. But I'm not going to go into that, at least in this in this uh, talk. So these are the things that we do agree upon. There are things that we don't agree upon, and I mean economists don't agree upon, and they're really at the forefront of the political debate. Namely, two critical issues. One is whether, in addition to the automatic stabilizer that we talked about a moment ago, but in, in addition to that, we should also engage in discretionary counter-cyclical policies, namely whether during recession we should actively uh, cut taxes or more, non, more uh, typically increase discretionary spending during recession, because uh, sort of in a Keynesian fashion. And the second thing that we don't agree upon is what is the effect of this policy, which always often are referred to as the size of spending and tax multiplier, that is, if I, if I increase government spending by, say, a dollar, what is the effect on the economy? Uh, how much this effect is multiplied or cut, namely whether the increase in government spending is compensated by cut in private spending. And of course, the answer to the question about the size of this multiplier is key in deciding whether discretionary policy are a good idea or not on the expansionary side and whether or not budget cuts are particularly costly or not. Now, the reason why we disagree upon this issue is because I think there are two reasons. One is, a more prosaic one, is that these are very high politically charged issues. So if you, are, you know, these are issues that are very much close to political views about the role of the state and how much we like government versus the private sector, versus the, versus the markets, which, uh, which is a, 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 on the background a very sort of big ideological divide, but even leaving that aside, there are a lot of uh, economic reasons why the problem is difficult, which has to do with the fact that it's essentially it's very difficult to disentangle what are the effects of government spending G and taxes on GDP, because there are big problems of co-movement of the three variables. So, for example, uh, spending, uh, for example, deficit over GDP uh, the ratio of deficit over GDP, they go up during uh, recession, uh, but that doesn't mean the deficit causes recession, it's simply that the denominator goes up, uh, and the other way around during booms. More generally, GDP, spending taxes and GDP are highly in intercorrelated, and it's very difficult to isolate the effect of exogenous changes of, say, government spending on GDP. And the second thing, for example, when we examine, like, there has been this, a big discussion going on about how costly are fiscal adjustments uh, that are going on now. It's very difficult to figure out exactly what are the costs of, of budget cuts. 
uh, because they're made in the guard at the same time. What's happening to monetary policy, what's happening to exchange rate, what's happening to the oil price of oil, so it's very difficult to isolate the effect of fiscal policy. So the problem is inherently difficult. So I think we as economists should be probably more ready than we actually are in admitting that there are a lot of things that we do not know and, uh, and not claim more than we actually know.